Hey, we're at Bay Area Maker Fair. Big thanks to Matter Hackers for bringing me out. I'm here with David Shorey. Hey, David. Hello, hello. David, you're known for something pretty awesome. Talk about it just a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm printing on fabric where I'm actually printing, then pausing the print, and then laying down the fabric, and then continuing the print so that the fabric gets embedded into the fabric. The, so you actually the print is embedded into okay. the fabric. So you actually have a physical bond between the fabric and your plastic. So I, I've seen people like Press Reset do 3D printing on t-shirts. Yeah. This seems to take it a step further. What, what inspired you to do this? Well, the thing that inspired me was the idea of actually being able to design what I wanted to design without the limitations of my dexterity. I didn't like to glue things down or be able to, you know, sew things. And this allows me to actually get my designs out without having to deal with those limitations. Well, essentially you've automated the repetitive process of gluing things onto fabric. Yes, absolutely. And it's a better connection because it's embedded, right? Yes, yes, it'll stay in there. Um, and then you can also do things besides fabric like paper clips rings, carbon fiber rods, all kinds of actually oh. other materials by creating a cavity design for the set object. So this is, obviously you took an idea and you ran with it. Yeah. And it seems to be iterating itself, I mean, yeah. thanks to you. What's, yeah. what's on the horizon for this? The thing that I want to eventually do is have a pick and place machine on top of my 3D printer so that it can drop the material on in the middle of the print so I don't have to do it by hand. Wow, well if you if you automate that process then it doesn't necessarily even have to be one layer of material. Correct. We can talk multiple layers of multiple materials. Exactly, exactly. You can put in, you know, electronics, motors, LED lights, you know, whatever. So you're actually making a product at the end of your 3D print rather than just a part. Have you found any limitations that you're needing to address in this? Is Are there certain fabrics that doesn't work, or is there certain materials that you 3D print with that don't exactly adhere? There's a lot of things as far as that's concerned. It needs to be a porous material. Tool um, is um, one of the materials, but that becomes very fragile. The best one is actually fiberglass screen door mesh. That actually is the best thing that I've found as far as my strength and ease of printing because it doesn't move around, and it goes through the holes very nicely. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. One of the things, though, I really want to talk to you about real quick is that dress right back there. Yeah. So what was the inspiration behind making that 3D printed on fabric dress? The, the thing is I wanted to actually have things that I could show that were very well constructed, show something that isn't normally, doesn't look 3D printed, has no sewing and no gluing. Well, what I what I love about it is the examples you show of 3D printing on fabric are like dragon scales or, or bumps or very very cosplay esque. But yeah. what you've created here is a functional piece of clothing, right? Yeah, that one actually snaps all together. The tops half and the bottom half snaps together with the rings, basically like fashion Legos. <laughs> fashion Lego. Yeah. That's perfect, David. I want to say thank you for your inspiration thank you and. Very much. Uh, Best of luck Thank going you. forward, my friend. Yeah. Have fun. Happy Maker Fair. Happy Maker Fair.